It was really the winter that wasn't. Climatological winter has come and gone, December, January, and February, and we wind up with the least snowiest winter on record and one of the warmest as well. And join with us to talk with us all about it is New Jersey State climatologist, my birthday buddy, my weather dad, Dave Robinson. He is here to put in context not only the winter that wasn't, but this mild and near snowless February that we did have. In addition to that, we talk about what this could mean for wildfire season and more. So without further ado, this episode of the Something in the Air podcast, our February and winter recap with Dr. Dave Robinson. And we'll welcome back on New Jersey State climatologist, Dr. Dave Robinson, housed at Rutgers University. You know, uh, Dr. Robinson, I like to tell people this was like the winter that wasn't. Um, and as we go into March, kind of looks like March wants to, you know, maybe make up for some lost time. What, what, what do you think about this winter so far or winter that wasn't so far? Because you're a ski guy. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think you... Uh... You correctly named it, uh, the winterless winter in many respects, both looking at it from a temperature aspect and a snowfall aspect. But as I always say, March can snow. And we've seen some very notable snow events. Um, 2018 had a very warm February, and we were hit with multiple snowstorms, particularly in the northern half of the state. Yes. Uh, early in middle March. Yeah. Yeah. But l let me ask you, because I, I actually have, as we as we are recording this on March 1st, I have a poll right now that says, given how warm it's been this winter, do you still want snow in March or are you just ready for 60s and 70s? So I want to put that question to you, since you're the snow guy. Uh, how What do you want March to be like in Dave Robinson's <laughs> ideal world? Yeah, I, I look at it in two directions. One, <clears throat> I often say, if you're close to a record, you might as well go for it. And when it comes to snow futility, the state is still running at a record low pace through the end of February um, when it comes to seasonal snowfall. So in that regard, <clears throat> if it hasn't snowed much already, just turn it off and be done with it. On the other hand, <laughs> I get some perverse pleasure out of seeing March, early April snowfalls when I can get out there on the golf course and I see the flags already set up on the driving range and I can use that as my slalom course <laughs> and, and see how aggravated people are <laughs> that it snowed again. But this year, they might actually welcome one snow event. And let's face it, this time of the year, the snow doesn't hang around all that long. The sun angles up there every week. The average temperature is climbing. So, you know, in that sense, people should be able to tolerate maybe one or two snow events. So me, I'm rooting for a couple of snow events. Yeah, I, I actually feel the same way as you. And, and that's why we're both Tauruses. You know, we both have that astrological uh, influence here. But I, I, I echo everything you said, except we've had even less snow down here. I mean, we had 0. 0.3 inches at Atlantic Sea International Airport. That is the record snowless winter uh, December, January, February, we have seen. Um, but I do love March snow. I just love how bright it gets when you got snow on the ground in March. You know, that sun's already kind of strong. You know, the white reflects a lot of that light. It just looks like it looks like it's summer just by how bright it is out there. But you got snow on the ground. So I'm a fan of that. Um, but let, let's talk briefly about the, the snowless winter we've had in South Jersey. We did have Two events in February. I don't even know if events the right word. It was like, you know, you took a little pixie dust and just sprinkled it. Um, we had uh, in early February on the 1st, we did have anywhere from like a coating to an inch. We got an inch in Lower Township um, with that. And then we did have one on the 25th where, I mean, it was like a tenth or two. Um, and we'll get into February more in detail, but that was the only snow we had, the only measurable snow we had all winter. So incredible. I don't just speak to just how snowless we were and just if you can put it in some kind of context for us. Well, I mean, you know, let's not say we've been overwhelmed with drifts here in central Jersey. 
I, yeah, I, I understand that. I but you've seen ten, something. I measured two tenths on the 1st of February and 1.3 inches on the 28th of February. And I can look over my shoulder and still see a little snow cover <laughs> in, in the backyard Yeah, uh, here on the 1st. Uh, but that will be gone by dinner time. So up north, they did have upwards of six, seven inches from this latest event. And it was really their fifth event where some parts of North Jersey have five times there's been two or more inches falling somewhere. But even in North Jersey, well below average. And the rest of the state, you know, near record levels. If you look at the state as a whole right now, we were at, we're at a record low pace. So should it not snow in March, this will enter the record books as the least snowy winter on record in New Jersey. Um, we've, we're going after 1972-73, um, 1997-98, um, 1918-1919, uh, and really just a couple of years ago, um, we had, what was that, 2021? 1920. And 2021 was, I mean, down south, both of them were very snowless for us. Right. And of course, we know what 21, 22 kind of flipped the script. We do. South Best winter Florida ever. Having more snow. You know, I got asked by a reporter at a coastal newspaper just yesterday. Um, another coastal how, newspaper. <laughs> another coastal. Right. A smaller coastal. No, nah, that's okay. It's, 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 all, it's all up around here. Of what? The right, right. Um, and they said, how come we're not having s snow anymore? And I reminded <laughs> them of last winter. I reminded them of the February 1st, 2021 storm gave some snow to the south. It was more central and north. It was more up north on the coast. But yes, I know what you're talking yeah, about. It was more north. Um, you know, so don't give up on snow folks yes jersey's getting warmer and we certainly saw signs of that this winter but it doesn't mean the snow machines turned off um <clears throat> as we look south down 95 when we get to north carolina virginia we're beginning any westward from there we're beginning to see signs of less snow over the last decade than we saw later in the 20th century but that hasn't made it if you will up this way yet we're still getting enough big storms. It's cold enough to snow on occasion. We had some low years, but we've had some pretty impressive years as well. So we're don't don't sell the shovel. Mm -hmm. Don't sell the sled. I'd say don't even put it away yet. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't either. <laughs> but you know, I have a friend whose whose son has a new home and has a couple other friends. They all bought snow blowers this year. I mean, that's a kiss of death. That's it. Yeah. It's a way it's a, it's, it's a jinx. You buy that. It's a jinx. Let, let me ask you this quickly and then we'll move on to just February in general, but can you differentiate for people, you know, how we get our snow in Southeastern New Jersey, as opposed to Northwestern New Jersey talking, you know, averages don't really mean that much down in this corner of the state as it could in Sussex County or Hunterdon County. Yeah, it's it so much has to do with the track of the low pressure system. Um, <clears throat> you know, up north, you've got altitude, a little bit of latitude, and you're further away from the coast. So those are three positives to producing more snow up in the northwest. Conversely, in the southeast, you've got lower elevations, a little further south, and you're right along the shore where the winds just have to turn on shore brings in just enough warmth. I mean, you don't think of the ocean as being very warm, but compared to northerly winds, an easterly wind is going to just bring you above that freezing mark. And I, I call it the magic freezing mark. And, gotcha. that's it. And, and, and it makes all the difference in the world, whether you're, you're shoveling or driving through puddles. Um, and so often in southeastern New Jersey, uh, you get that ocean influence and it just brings the temperatures just above that magic freezing point and you get rain. What you want is clearly a storm that's far enough off the coast that it doesn't turn the winds on shore. It keeps them coming in from the north. And then you can keep the cold air funneling down through the state. And 
you've got the moisture close enough to you, and there's your recipe for snow, a la la two storms last January, yeah. when the northwest part of the state was plenty cold enough, but they were shut out of the moisture. A classic example of that is the 2010, December 2010 storm, where the whole Delaware Valley only had half a foot of snow, while the whole Garden State Parkway had two feet of snow. Yes, the so Boxing Day perfect, blizzard. Yeah, there's the perfect situation. My you, favorite. The cold air was pouring down from the north, and the precip just backed in. If that storm was 100 miles further east, excuse me, further west, it would have been a rainstorm along the coast, and the Delaware Valley would have gotten socked with the heavy snow. I just want to say that Boxing Day Blizzard, my favorite snowstorm in my life. And I hope I can have a better one in my life. But for now, that one is the best one in my life. I saw 28 inches of snow from that. I mean, you got what better could it get? Um, all right, let, let's start. God, sorry. I've never seen that. I grew up in Jersey. I've never, my backyard has never had 28 inches of snow. From really? Snow. Wow. I've been in the low 20s on multiple occasions, but never that high. You got to follow me. I mean, last year we had all the snow down south, Boxing Day blizzard. You know, I, I know where to go for, for snow. Um, all right, let's look at temperatures in February. Um, you know, the way I see it, it, I mean, it was definitely above average by a lot, but it wasn't as anonymously warm as January. Um, I, you know, we had actually a pretty... So the difference between January and February, I thought was February actually had like a cold stretch at the beginning of the month. January just never even had that. You take those like the first to the fourth of February away, and you're pretty much in January. But those first four days kind of, I don't even know if I want to say tempered because it was still so above average, but it definitely took the edge off. Well, it kept it kept this month, it kept February out of first place for one. Right, exactly. Because in Atlantic City, I looked, it was the fourth warmest. Not only goes back to the 50s, but at the marina that goes back to the 1870s. Um, it tied for the uh, second um, warmest on record. Um, and then you look statewide, it looks like we're going to end up about the sixth, fifth, sixth, maybe seventh mildest. And and you're right. It's all the fact that we had those brutal, two cold, brutally cold days where we got into the single digits in a lot of the states for lows. And even along the coast, it was well down into the te into the low and middle teens. So I think um, looking at my notes, the marina got down to 12. Uh, no, the airport, airport got, got to 12. 12. Marina got to 16. And yeah. that was one of the that was the mild spot in the state. <laughs> uh, it yeah. was 10 below up at high point. Yeah. But yeah. Wind chill, 10 below on the thermometer. Wow. I've never even been in anything that cold. Um, yeah. So, it, you know, besides those first four days, though, I mean, we were pretty much coasting from there. I, I mean, I'm counting one two three days below average from the fifth to the 28th you know we had a number of days in the 60s as well and so you know for the most part we did carry over from january and, and well above average here and, and this was more like you know an average march again for us in many parts of the area it, you know uh you want to say something about that no i mean it was about the same uh, about the same average temperature. Actually, a little February was the cooler. Here's the interesting thing. We look at winter, we climatologists, meteorologists, December, January, and February. What's on average the coldest? January. January. What this year was the warmest? January. January. December was colder than February, which was colder than January. So it was December the coldest, then February, then January. Hmm. Go figure. Yeah, go figure. Um, all right. Well, that's good info on the on the temperatures. We're gonna take a quick break, everybody. We're gonna come back. We're gonna talk about a little more of this warm weather, how dry we've been too at times, and uh, we'll recap about the winter that was not as well. You're listening to the Something in the Air podcast. We are 
are back with the Something in the Air podcast. You can catch these podcasts at the top of every month as New Jersey State Climatologist Dr. Dave Robinson and I recap the month that was. Sometimes we recap the season that was, too, and we've been doing that today as well. We've been talking about February. We've been talking about the winter that wasn't. And any time Dave Robinson has entered the chat, there is always, always something to talk about. Joe, we 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 can bore the heck out of the listeners anytime they want. <laughs> Listen, if you've been listening, you know, since day one, and we're on like five years of this now, you know, big, big kudos to you. Cause you know, sometimes we really get in the weeds. We've been trying to do pretty good, not getting too, too in the weeds recently, but, uh, but you know, sometimes we like to dive in. It's just our excitement about the weather. Just, we, we can't control it. Sometimes we can't. Control yeah. It. I mean, well, we'll have to work on getting into the weeds again. That's, that's disappointing if we're just being general in nature. Well, I, I agree with you there. I think there's a there's a balance. I, what I'm saying is I think we've got a good balance, but maybe we should do like an extra episode where we really just dive into it yeah. and we can uh, maybe we'll charge. Who knows? You know, and maybe it's a live event. Who knows? That'd be fun. All right. <laughs> Let's talk about uh, precipitation in February. A lot of this fell as rain, not snow. As we discussed before, we had 0.3 inches at Atlantic City International Airport, really up to an inch total anywhere in southeastern new jersey but looking at precipitation as a whole we were pretty dry yeah we didn't get much in the form of liquid water falling from the skies either um you know i always come up with some numbers for you uh first i think to put it in perspective the the airport um had uh 1.75 inches which is almost an inch and a half below normal the 12th driest february on record and the marina had the 14th driest almost two inches below normal um now i love to talk kudos to our coco Ross observers of course uh, in, in the three county area and in atlanta county uh the port republic observer had 2.21 inches for the most i should mention that's rain and any snow that fell is melted down and the liquid equivalent is added um and um ventnor had the least 1.61 so very close together uh same in cape may 1.94 at woodbine for the most the least in lower township 1.48 uh and then up in ocean county long beach township 1.99 for the most and brick 1.38 for the least so you'll notice th that they're only about a half an inch apart between the most and the least which Come summer, we'll be talking multiple inches of <laughs> oh, oh yeah, with the thunderstorms. Yeah. But this is very indicative of a, a pretty dry pattern. Very few events that kind of hit the area in a uniform fashion. Yeah, and if I could dive into the why a little bit, maybe we can get into the weeds a little bit. It's because we've had a southeastern ridge of high pressure. So you know, a ridge is a thicker atmosphere. It's it's more you know aloft with us here. Typically, it brings drier and milder weather and and it's been pretty consistent you know how long i mean really i would say much of the winter but definitely since new year's day you know since the start of the new year and and that's why we've been dry here um as well and you know it's been nice because it's been mild and we've had these dry days you know um but let's talk about you know wildfires because you know you don't want to be too dry going into March as that sun gets higher and, you know, it typically the humidity will lower more. You'll have more days of lower humidity. The New Jersey Forest Fire Service, and I'm going to get the, see if I can pull the exact number for you. They've been doing prescribed burnings to really limit the impact of any, let's say, unsuspecting wildfires. You know, if it happens by accident or by lightning, whatever, um, you know, helps to limit the spread of that. But the Forest Fire Service um has burned i got the number here 6485 acres from january 1st to february 26th um that is the highest since 2020 which was another uh very mild winter we had yeah no that's interesting i hadn't seen the 6000 but put that in perspective the forest fire that burned um last june in, in South Jersey was about 14,500 acres. So the, they've almost burned prescribed half of that. And that 14.5 acre fire was the most since 2007, the largest fire. So 
this shows you they're they're out there and and they're taking advantage of the fact it's dry but not dangerously dry at this time of the year but as you suggested if this pattern were to persist they're going to have to start being much more careful as you get the later march and into april because of the warmer temperatures and the drier fuel and and, and it gets pretty windy in the spring too not that it doesn't in the in the winter but you've got these temperature contrast in the, in the spring that can sometimes give us windy days so uh it looks like that pattern and i'm really glad you mentioned that high pressure ridge off the southeast because too often i've even been attributing this winter um dry drier and milder and snow free pattern to the storm track along the jet stream which has been flowing out of the central part of the country up through the great lakes and off into eastern canada but if you think of it that ridge of high pressure has helped help to keep that jet stream to the north and with that steering most of the moisture out of this away from this area and bringing the warm winds up be it from the high pressure ridge or from the storms to our west. So they two really have gone hand in hand. We call a ridge and trough pattern. If you go out west, my buddies out there, they're complaining like mad about persistent wetness and persistent cold. And this is anywhere from the front range in Colorado out to, out to Oregon. And of course we know They've had twice the normal snowfall for the season already in the Sierra Nevadas of Col of California. Hey, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I think Tucson, Arizona will be getting snow on the 2nd of March here. Well, they had snow about two weeks ago. Oh, um, okay. I have a friend. <laughs> I someone be tracking that. You are the operator of the Rutgers Global Snow Lab. But I, I have a friend who moved out of Central Jersey when he retired a couple of years ago, simply because he couldn't stand winter. So <laughs> I was giving him the business when as, before two days ago, before we got the snow on the 27th to 28th, Tucson had had more snow than New Brunswick. Um, and I, I giving him the business. Yeah, I mean, I, I'm surprised you haven't taken a trip out there, a little snowcation. Uh, that that would be nice. I was yeah. in Denver and saw some snow back in early January. That is true. <laughs> that is true. You were there for the American Meteorological Society Conference, which is always a good time. Next year, will be in Baltimore, though. We'll see what happens. Well, and I, I head back to Denver later in March for the American Association of Geographers annual meeting, where I'll be mm -hmm. giving a snow talk. Right. What do you think is cooler? The, what do you think is cooler, the AMS meeting or the geographers meeting? AMS meeting. Oh, okay. <laughs> you did. My geographer co geography colleagues, I'm in a geography department. Yeah. But I've been involved with AMS since I was in graduate school. Geography came a little bit later. Got it. Okay. I didn't know you were, in, I didn't think you were going to answer that so uh, easily here. Uh, well, I have to say, I'm out there getting the Lifetime Achievement Award of the Cryosphere Specialty Group of AAG. So, okay. Congratulations. I shouldn't be too dismissive of of right. an AAG. Well, the award is is well deserved. Uh, absolutely, of course. Um, let's just uh, let's as we wrap up here. Let's get back to and zoom out to winter as a whole. So we talked about the snow. Let's talk about the temperatures. Um, you know, December. It might feel like a long time ago. We were actually below average in a number of spots in December. And then we really turned on the jets and was warm for January and February. So when we look back at climatological winter, um, where do we stand? Well, we don't have the final numbers yet, but it looks like we're going to be in the top five. I, I would say we're a lock for one of the five uh, warmest winters on record. However, we're not going to be number one. Um, 2001, 2002 was up there. 2020, 2021 was there. Uh, I'd say preliminarily we're going to be third or fourth mildest. But notice I've mentioned other winters within the last decade or two. Um, right. We turned on those winter warm jets in the last couple of decades and, and nothing, nothing is stopping it. Yeah. I mean, in a, in a climate changing world, you're pretty much taking out you know let's let's, let's look at a six-sided die right you take out the one and you put another six there you know you can still you know 
not roll a six, but your chances of rolling those sixes, those warmer temperatures has a higher percentage. And, and that's essentially what we're doing here. Um, let me ask you this, if we could speculate for a second, if December was just average, would we be number one? Yeah, yeah. I, I, okay. If we hadn't had that cold spell right before the holidays and the holiday weekend in December, I think we might have made number one and then take out the cold couple of days, the beginning of February. But of course, you can't take them out. <laughs> no, they you occurred. Can't. So, right. and you can look back in the past at those situations as well. So, I often sometimes smile when I say that um, because I realize you can't take them away. They were part of the pattern. Uh, it broke down a couple of times and we snuck in some Arctic air on two occasions and, and some brutally cold Arctic air on some very strong winds. Yeah. Um, but they were what was most remarkable i'd say about the february cold snap wasn't necessarily how cold it got was how quickly it warmed up it was oh, yeah. just remarkable it just we call it a you and i know it's a progressive pattern yes there wasn't blocking in the north atlantic and things just scooted on through time and again i i was like you know wash rinse dry repeat wash rinse dry yeah. repeat and it's been that way all winter long. And every once in a while, you snuck in a, a little bit of cold air. Um, but boy, it was um, a rather persistent pattern, which is very much what we see in our climate these days. Not necessarily the extreme extremes, but when you get in a pattern, it can be very persistent. Yeah, well, I, I'll say this too. And I, I said this on, on socials, you know, the early, for February, most of it was the early part of the week was mild. Wednesday, Thursday was very mild. Storm comes Thursday night or Friday. Friday's temperatures fall all day long. Saturday's cold. And then we already start to dig out of it by Sunday here. And, and that was pretty much the case. Definitely through the last three weeks of February. Um, doesn't look like to, doesn't look like to be the case this week, but it could be close depending on the track of the storm system. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to wrap it up here. Uh, we'll be back with you guys at the beginning of April to talk about the March uh, that was or wasn't. We'll see if March ends up being more of a wintry month finally as we try to dig out here. And uh, we'll talk to you all about, again, that month as we get into spring. So for New Jersey State Climatologist, Dr. Dave Robinson, I'm meteorologist Joe Martucci. Thanks for listening to the Something in the Air podcast.